It could be Man, wrong. Do we, do, do we all declare war on our beards recently? Yeah, I shaved. I hate it. I don't want to ever do it again. I'm going Yeah, right I'm feeling the same way. Like, I forgot how short my, like, my chin stops about two inches shorter than my beard was and now i'm like oh man my face is weird proportions <laughs> plus i've i've got a little extra poundage i'm trying to get rid of and nothing shows it off more than shaving your beard for the first time in like five years oh that is oh, true that, that is that yeah. will motivate you you look in the mirror will, and go what the frick is that potato in my <laughs> visage uh, um, i grew a goiter i don't it like happened. it i don't like it yeah. uh here ba patrick also said this once bastion has a c yeah. Oh, that's a censored version. I have an uncensored version. Here's <laughs> oh, this, here's this version. It, it, it's, in that case, yeah. it is absolutely the, I mean, it's not the body part. He has, he actually <laughs> has a bird, which uh -huh. is a male chicken, yeah. you know, a rooster. Sure. Also known as a cock. Yeah. Bastion has a cock. cock. Yeah, exactly. Well done. I, I make fart I've noises. A, I've got this one from Dill's. Okay. But you know that the one that lived probably had like a bigger lead dick. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. the lead dick. I've got lead dick in here as well somewhere. I'm not a big lead action dick. figure. Oh, that's good to know about Patrick. Listen to this. Listen to this a little bit. I'm not a big action figure. Yeah, you're not a big action figure. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. He didn't. He didn't get the GI Joe proportions. No. He just. He just got the the Kenner Star Wars proportions. Sadly. All right, one more. I'm not saying your literal penis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying your literal penis. Your that literal even penis. Mean I know. I don't know what it means at all. It's pretty great though. Oh, this is good. Yeah, I've let this nothing. Go. You know, it was it was the literal penis as opposed to the metaphorical penis. Yeah. that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget the metaphorical <laughs> penis. I'm not saying your literal penis, just a metaphorical one. Yeah. Metaphorical. Oh, don't have the word fork in the in anywhere near my penis. All right, let's do this. Let's do a show. Uh, oh, are we starting? All right. Yeah, I think so. But do have it near my wieners. Yes, have it near your wieners. Um, That's how you eat sausage. Why do I only have an average connection? Oh, I see. Oh, because we're connected to U.S. West. Okay. Oh, that's uh, you know what? I can f I can actually improve that by putting it. No, that's that's fine. Let me do this. Hold on. This is okay. Cent oh, central exactly. often helps oh there we go that yeah. is a, a very clear connection yeah for some Perfect. reason central servers are way better i don't know why so it's fine. just central us it's not even like central world or anything um all right here we go let's do a show it's recording and we're ready to roll and volume is up and sound is good da -da -da -da. all right here we go it starts in three two one do you know what she's done while you've been hiding I left that life behind. I'm no one's savior. I will not lead the horde. I didn't ask. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Instance, episode 558. It is Friday, May 17th, 2019. I'm Scott Johnson with Patrick Beja. Hello. Hey, so let me make a prediction right here, right this second, right now. Go. Uh, I didn't ask is going to become a uh, <laughs> massive meme in the next few months. Yeah, I it's think it's like I, a it's already of doing Sour it. Fang. Yeah. Oh, it already is. Yeah, okay, you're well, seeing you're seeing small ones already. already. Correct. Then. Yeah, they're already starting. But I still I'm with you that months from now, we're still going to be uh, the the gifs and the and the text are going to be rolling hard, yo. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. As a generation uh, hey, of Scott. children say. Hey, oh, Garrett. Hi. How's hi. it going, guys? Hey, good. Oh, what? Garrett? Yeah, that's right. Garrett Wines are all over there. What's going on, Garrett? Coffee tears, gentlemen. Oh, coffee tears. Does that Wait, mean you put tears in your coffee? Tears or tears? I said cheers. Oh. <laughs> sure. Coffee tears. That's what happens when you're, you burn your coffee. <laughs> 
I don't know. Yeah. Just like the you know, the idea that you would leak a couple of tears into your morning brew is kind of interesting and funny to me. <laughs> I mean that that was an emotional cinematic for sure, but not 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 tear worthy. No, 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 not not to the point to uh, put tears in your coffee. Yeah. And by the way, no, you want to you, you want to put tears in my coffee? I guess I don't know. Uh, take me to see an early morning showing of Endgame. Oh, that'll, that'll get that'll you. That'll do it. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll get you every time. Uh, my kids all went. Uh, it was my son's birthday yesterday, so they all took him to see uh, John Wick three last night. And uh, oh yeah, oh, that was that's pretty good. That. Yeah, hearing nothing but amazing things about that sequel. So very excited about that. So I can finally move on emotionally from Endgame because that's all I've thought thought about movie wise for weeks now. And now you it's time. You and every quality person in the world, Scott. <laughs> you uh, just in time, Scott, to have. Uh, emotional baggage return with the end of game of thrones on sunday yeah i can't wait for that although well the, inter the mean, internet's driving yeah. me nuts patrick patrick not not that you're part of the problem patrick but you're you're my go-to for whoever's being the most like you're the most negative i know about game of thrones right now but i like your <laughs> right. commentary because you're reasonable and you make points and then you have conversation about it so you're my preferred yeah. descent i will go to you and your ilk every time thank you so yeah. the thing is, not to go into spoilers, which we won't, but my problem with Game of Thrones isn't the direction things are going. It's that it's it's so rushed that it's not earned. That's my problem. Um, so, yeah. 100% agree. That. The pace is bad. I, yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. We can move on from this quickly because I agree entirely. Very quickly. Yeah. Let's yeah. not. I, no, I got my point across. Uh, yeah. So we don't need anyone else's point. Yeah. It's fine. And, we, and we all agree. It's all that's about pacing. Everybody who I know yes. who is smart and intelligent knows it's about pacing and doesn't sign a 500,000-person signature uh, thing oh, to have them rewrite can we, it. Can we back that off just a hair? Like, if you disagree <laughs> with that statement, that does not mean you are an, a dumb and unintelligent I believe person. it. I believe it might. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it definitely <laughs> does, but there's a good chance that it does. Oh, That's my God. Okay, cool. <laughs> Listen, wow, let's right. move on from this conversation. Yes, we're not going to talk about this. Points. We're not going to talk about this. It's very reasonable and coherent, so we can now move on and talk about other things that we can have arguments about. Like these. We have our first Thrall-based cinematic ever in the history of World of Warcraft. That is to say, fully rendered, you know, CGI, top shelf rendered cinematic uh, that's, featuring that's Thrall. That's a good point. Yeah, he's never been in any of these things. In fact... A lot of your main players simply have not been in them. Um, occasionally you'll get, I mean, we've had Sylvanas most recently, but prior to her appearance in the, uh, the bit she was in for Legion, we hadn't had her either. So, uh, and also I think that applied to Varian. That was Varian's first appearance in a fully rendered cinematic. So what we usually get is more generic stuff. Uh, I would say right up to Warlords where, you know, it was just kind of, I'm trying to remember what Cataclysm was. It was the dragon, I guess, and that was it. But you never really got, like, character, uh, specific hero-type characters that we deal with in the story until that time. And then from then forward, um, in the case of Warlords, it was like a bunch of old, you know, older heroes and villains. Um, so you didn't even get the more modern takes. But now we have Thrall, freaking Thrall, Goel, father of one, wife of, of, uh, of uh, what's her name, Agra. Who knows where the hell they are? They're out shopping at Walmart or something while this whole uh, interchange takes place. But they're it's... off in we didn't want to model them, uh, <laughs> uh, Ville. That's where that's yeah. where they're off to. I mean, I do like the idea that Thrall's protective about where they might be because he he's not sure what. Well, Sarah he says they're close. Are. It's not oh, like was... yeah, yeah. That that was that was the most Western ass line delivered in this entire cinematic. Is just like the the dude who <laughs> doesn't want to be found and like, hey, where's your family? Like, and doesn't give an They're answer. Close. Doesn't give a direct answer to where the family is. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I couldn't be more into all the writing in this cinematic. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, it, but you're right. It also saves on <laughs> on rendering out full models of characters <laughs> we don't need to see. Uh, yeah, frankly, uh, getting one new one in the form of Thrall was. A surprise. It was a huge surprise. I mean, I mean, I, th I in, figured they had run dry on this stuff. Although, I mean, I can say it now. I knew Chris was in for recording and because he told me so, but he didn't say when or what the context was. One would assume Thrall because Varian's dead. So I thought, well, all right, what's that about? And then I kind of forgot about it. And then suddenly we have a cinematic. And not only that, Thrall's talking like Metzen, saying Metzen things from the interviews we did. Like straight up, this thing's like a weird ghostly shadow of some well, of the stuff he said. Now I know, I, I know think, it's. it's I, I heard you say that on core. I think you're pushing it a tiny bit. 
but sure. <laughs> Not really. I think, think about it. Like, I left that. So, I left like, that world long ago. I'm. He's. I've. My. I'm here. I'm with my family now. I don't want to. There's a very tangible uh, parallel between the life of Chris Chris Metzen leaving Blizzard and Thrall and his current. Like I don't want to yes, deal with it. Stance. Sure. It's. I mean, yeah. mm, um, literally put. <laughs> his character i mean himself in the latest evolutions of thrall in the past which is why it's it fits but yeah yeah i guess it still means that there's some of that sure yeah it's 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 worth mentioning though like you know uh metzen is way more self-aware than thrall is in this in this scene like thrall is high on his own supply like he like he's kind of this is the the most dickish we've ever seen thrall be uh, I don't. I, I can't imagine Metzen like uh, t- telling me he's he's no one's savior because I don't think he ever thought he was in the first place. <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. But a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people look to him as like the heart and soul of Blizzard, and, and I don't think that's fair. He doesn't think that's fair, I should say, because there's that's, that's teams and teams and teams of people. Yet he was had this mantle placed upon him, you know, owned or not, deserved or not, that was just sort of you know it weighed a lot. Here's my thing. If I'm Thrall, I don't want to be in the Grand very long because it seems like the wheat you're getting to make your bread is shitty. That's some shitty wheat. Did you see that? <laughs> he goes and uh, the Sour Fang grabs a handful of it. It just falls apart like a bunch of dust and uh, detritus. It's horrible. So get out of there and get some real wheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I don't know how you use that to make bread. Yeah. Like it literally disintegrates when you take it in your hand. Yeah, it's, it, uh, it goes it's to show. Yeah. My knowledge of wheat because I go, oh, is that how it's not? That's not how it's supposed to happen. <laughs> I don't know. No, he's like, oh, it's all crumbling. He thinks it's wrong. And part of his, I mean, I, I assume the implications here are Thrall's so out of touch with the elements now and no longer can control them uh, or have any communion with them that the that stuff's just kind of fallen apart. Or, or at the very least, the Grand is sort of disagrees with him despite it being sort of his homeland. Uh, I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm maybe reading too much into it, but that's the the feeling I got was more like, you know, it looks great. This seems okay, but it's kind of an artifice, and it seems like it's maybe falling apart. And Azeroth herself is in peril, and you know, this is all, you know, connected also, to that stuff. Yes. Maybe uh, the reason he doesn't want to show us his kid is that the when you grow up eating that wheat, you grow up like weird. And he's like, no, he's just, uh, he's not far when he's actually are you, hiding. Are you saying that they didn't want to re- relive the ugly baby episode of Seinfeld? That's why we didn't see Thrall's son? <laughs> I haven't seen child. it, but I it's actually know the You should see it. It's fantastic. It's a piece of yeah. work, man. You should watch that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love Anyways. that one. It's a great episode of Seinfeld. But the point is, like, I the, some have, uh, there have been a couple rumors floating around. I don't know if it's because we're all just in, like, that mode of, you know, everyone's analyzing game of thrones everybody's analyzing end game like there's a lot of popular culture right now that's getting overly analyzed but i've heard a couple I of think theories it's because this is yet another piece of fiction that's very important to people <laughs> but yeah no i think i think you're totally right and i'm and i'm 100 percent cool with it i enjoy the the back and forth but one theory i heard was that this is a version of the grand that's in uh, that's of thrall's making and that it's falling apart because he can't control the elements the way he used to but this is where he's hiding because otherwise he's not really hiding like he's if he's really in the grand, like straight up, like I guess warlords in the grand, or I guess he could be an outlands in the grand. No, it's it's yeah, confirmed it's outlands. outlands in the grand. Okay, yeah. so this is it. so this is outlands in the grand then. Yes, it has the floaty bits. Like there, you can go to this exact angle, like the establishing shot that it, you can go there in game, and it's in outland. Uh, some shitty quests right down there by that mountain, that that little mountain thing that's in the middle there. Some shitty, shitty, shitty quests. I'm just saying. Oh, Osh- Osh- Oshagun? Yeah, yeah, I never liked those quests either. <laughs> Not a good time. Just a memory I have of that. Maybe it holds up better now. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's beautiful and rad, and I and I. I have the feeling we're not done with these in in that if they have one now for this, they'll surely have something for for closer to the end of the cycle. And that would be really cool. Whatever the big ending it. is now, I'm I'm expecting a cinematic for it. Yeah. Whatever the the, 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 the whatever big bag goes down, if it's Sylvanas, if it's Nazoth, whatever. Uh if Sylvanas becomes a Lich King, which I'm still crossing my fingers for, we're getting a cinematic for it. Yeah. So can we address 
the the things that are actually happening in the cinematics yeah. since we're talking about Sylvanas. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Well, All you, right. you start it. Tell me what's happening. So, I mean, everyone's seen it now, right? Yeah. So, um, essentially, Sylvanas is sending assassins to kill Thrall, which I will be incredibly curious to hear how the, if we can get political for a second, how the Sylvanas apologists, like Sylvanas did nothing wrong, like she's my war chief, blah, blah, blah. How are they going to defend that one? Yeah. Like, how is Sylvanas still worthy of being the war chief of the Horde when she's sending assassins to, if it's her, I mean, I'm kind of assuming it's her, maybe wrongly, but um, if it's her, how do you defend that when the one character you've been rooting for and hoping, like your hero, is being targeted by that crazy night elf undead thing? I don't think right? you can uh, defend first, it. First of all, hi, uh, hi elf. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, okay. Uh, but she's a living blue, YouTube so. comment. Yeah. Um, uh, so if you are RPing as loyal, to Sylvanas, you're probably not a Thrall fan in the first place. He's a threat. He's a threat to your leader's rule. Mm. Yeah. You know, he's got strong ties yeah, but to that's the traitor not... sour thing. And that's that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy to go with. Uh as someone who was No, I don't think uh, sorry, just to comment on that. The the question isn't if you're RPing as a no matter what uh loyalist, that I understand how it could be, you know, rationalized. But the question is more, can you justify the actions of Sylvanas as morally right? You know, mm. like, oh, she's doing it because she needs to do that for the Horde and that kind of thing. Like, she, well, there are, that there's a reason to defend the Horde, whereas that's a secondary thing. Like, if you're, if you're already, if you've decided that you want to defend Sylvanas no matter what, then, yes, obviously you, want, you need to... Uh, take away the threats to her rule. Uh, but it's, yeah. it's two different right. topics. I feel. I, I feel. Yeah. Um. But, well, I mean, you're you're assuming everyone just cares about Thrall, I guess, as much as as you do. Um, <laughs> which I'm sure there's some people. Yeah. Who don't. Do, you, do you think that's an unfair? Like, you, you don't think? Yeah, he's one I of do. The most I do to a certain degree. Characters I don't in think everyone is, finds Thrall to be all that important. Uh, I think there's an argument to be made for Thrall being uh, blasphemy. A pro a pro no, hear me out. A proven failed leader. He, he put the first Sylvanas in power mm. uh, and walked away Yeah, and decided to do his gap year and become a freaking shaman hippie. <laughs> uh, so fair like, enough. Fair enough. Rawl's not a great leader. Like he, he started strong and ended horribly. Um, so there's that. And then there's also just like, again, if you, whether you're RP or not, you know, if, if you're in the camp of the Sylvanas's tactics and worldview, uh, is correct, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I'll play devil's advocate here, that if you think that uh, she just wants to win the war so there's no more wars, uh, sure, Thrall's a threat to that strategy. Yeah, I'm kind of going to side with Patrick on this one, not because I, I, I agree with you, and I think that if you're RPing this, yes, but she's a bad, she's a bad person. Like she's a, we have now. Oh, totally. I, and th I didn't need the cinematic to convince me of that. And that's kind of been my, my issue. This entire expansion is it seems really heavy handed uh, in terms of making Sylvanas out to be the bad guy when we were supposed to have, you know, yeah. shades of gray. Yeah, this is true. And, and, you know, I, even with all of this, I do feel like the, um, the, the, this uh, assassination of Thrall, the attempted assassination is a an escalation of in, in, inimaginable proportions like going after it's not just like even bane and Sourfang, who had actively defied her were one thing but going to assassinate a former war chief and hero of the horde even if you think you know he's he's not that good he's not that great actually anymore we hate him going to assassinate him is uh, uh, you know, escalating significantly. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's that. That's a like the point of no return. So, uh, going to assassinate uh, you, the guy who put you in power, it's pretty gnarly. I, I'm, I'm, I, I would, I'm, I don't necessarily like want to fight about this, but I do just want to point out for nerdy reasons that 
killing one orc versus uh, the genocide of an entire city. <laughs> uh, Thrall is not escalation. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the burning of Teldrassil was okay. The peak. Let's put it in context. Let's put it in context. Imagine some American leader went out and assassinated George Washington. Uh -huh. He would be considered a you know, that's the step you don't cross, right. you, uh, the line you don't cross. I think it's that kind of... Yeah, if you had... So if John Adams, if John Adams went and killed uh, his predecessor, who was uh, Washington, if he did that, that would seem... That would be very bad. I don't know if... The, I, I, I don't know what the definition of treason is, but it feels treasonous even though he's not in power, the guy you killed. So it's a pretty gnarly move, politically and otherwise. Now, let's not forget the important thing here, though. The game finally got a rendered uh, sort of full-blown edition of a couple of rogues, and that's never happened in the history of the game. So yeah, and like canonized you... their the way their stealth works. Yeah, the I was sound just assumed even. going semi see through was just the game's way of of depicting this, and in reality, we were hiding. But no, mm -hmm. we're I think as John Jagger put it, we're they're they're predators. If you're a rogue, you're a freaking predator. Yeah, you have Congratulations. This, it's magic basically. It's not it's not just hey, I'm I'm sneaky. It's actually magic, or at least that's how it appears. And that sound that accompanies it, that it's always done, that <laughs> thing, is right there in the cinematic like multiple times. So uh, I cheered as loud when I heard that noise accompany the effect <laughs> as I did for a certain character picking up a certain item in Endgame. Like yeah. it was that that level of nerddom for me. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So cool seeing that, seeing that rendered out. It was, um, it was cool that it did yeah, that in that the, way. The, if, the, you know, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say the other thing, too, to keep in mind, though, is that this is, you know, a small snippet. If this appears in game, I'm assuming it's going to. It's probably going to be, you know, there's going to be a quest lead in and there'll be something that happens after this plays. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the whole story here. Right? Oh, right. right. So because there's all kinds of conspiracies going around, like Sylvanas wouldn't just send two rogues to assassinate Thrall. That wouldn't work. Burr, 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 burr. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's true. Uh, I think maybe we're, we could also potentially be overthinking this and because because there's also... I could see the beating at Blizzard being like, you know what we haven't had? Undead rogues and cinematics. Let's just get that in there. Mm. Yeah, they, she would probably send Dark Rangers, but let's do undead. Yeah. That was uh, that's also, and, it, and it might also not be her. Are we certain it's her? Well, I mean, they say... I, ooh, that's a pretty that's a, a pretty uh, direct line, considering okay. they're undead. But, um, right. Yeah, they've no, got to be from her. But maybe it could be Nathanos. It could be Nathanos, taking, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a dick. Yeah. It's totally possible it's him. That guy's a huge dick. I could see him making. Yeah, calls but he also. I don't think he wipes his butt unless Sylvanas tells him it's okay. So he is pretty true. loyal, but I could see him going. It's what the Dark Lady would have wanted, or some bullshit, and then send him on their way. <laughs> and totally uh, uh, Tally Taliesin brought up the idea of maybe they were just scouting and saw a, an opening and went for it, even if they weren't necessarily Ooh, if, ordered. If you're sent to scout, and you actually kill, try to kill the. War chief, that is a really bad move. Right. Oh yeah, no. It's... Well, right, right. But who knows? I mean, there's so many. It could also be, hey, just keep an eye on them. You too. It's fine. It's all I can spare. Yeah, just yeah. Keep an so, eye. if you but see, then you, do, you, you don't go, go to go kill him. back. Right, right, right. right. But it, maybe, maybe it was the appearance of Sarafang that that tipped their hand. We don't know yet. None of this I think is we'll find out though. None of this is squashing the people who've long complained that um, Sylvanas is just Garage 2.0, and. uh I have a little uh, concerns about that because <laughs> no, she, it she, made it worse. Yeah, it made it a little bit worse, or at least reinforced it. Um, it it just it does feel it's like the same path. I mean, yes, you could say Garage was just you know angry and 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 had an idea for the horde from the beginning that was going to lead down a dark path or whatever. But you could say mm -hmm. the same thing about her and her desire to just protect the undead. She doesn't care that much about the horde. It's really the undead she's worried about and the Forsaken, and she'll do whatever it takes to do that or add to that which, you know, death just means more to her army. So, I don't know, man. I feel like it is it is a lot, Garage 2.0. How it pans out in the end will make the difference. Like, what is right, right. That's, end game? I think that's the big question at this point, is is it intentional? Because it seems too Can you imagine step. it would pan out in a different way than what we're imagining? I mean, I don't uh, know. I mean, we can't just have Siege of Orgrimmar 2, can yeah, we? We can, like, <laughs> I guess, but I don't <laughs> think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. It'd be a bad uh, idea. I think people would be pretty pretty ticked off about it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, she can't be seem... she can't be the final boss, can she? I mean, 
she can't be. No, I don't think so. I, don't I think, think so. Sylvanas is destined for greater, more horrible things at this point. Oh, more horrible things, yeah. like more atrocities. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I think, think it's... It's not... It's not... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I, th- I think we're seeing the rise of, 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 of just Warcraft's next big bad. I don't, I don't think we deal with her here. I think she gets, you know, she just moves on from the horde that uh, she gets bigger aspirations. Mm. And uh, maybe she disappears for a while and comes back in uh, Wrath of the Banshee Queen. Wow. I hadn't thought of that. They could keep her on as, the, as your heir apparent to all things evil for a while. And I mean, that, that was part of what was cool about how they handled Arthas was that he just disappeared mm-hmm. in the beginning of World of Warcraft. You know, we mm-hmm. came out of Warcraft 3 wanting to know what the hell happened to him. And it was just kind of we saw the, the remnants of the scourge in Azeroth and in Burning Crusade. It, it, we had nothing to do with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sylvanas at this point, I think, is is becoming a big enough bad that we could kind of put her away for an expansion or two. Yeah. And bring her back. Yeah. I don't know. I, I... Then you'll have people complain that there is no closure to Sylvanas and her horrible reign of terror. Um, uh, yeah, that's all right. I'll fight those people because there was... Uh, there, you could say the same thing about Warcraft 3, one of the greatest video games and one of the greatest video game stories ever told. So, you know, uh, yeah. I'll go to bat for that. All right. Fair enough. Any other thoughts, final feelings about this otherwise uh, expertly made piece of cinematic quality content from Blizzard? Either of you? No. I, I just can't hammer home enough how good the writing is <laughs> yeah this like, was and, and this was apparently a, much... it was a full-blown christy golden joint um, yeah, yeah yeah that's what i heard and uh there's not that much dialogue but what dialogue there is 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 some of the better dialogue we've we've seen i think out of warcraft sure um I, i'll be christ when when sarah Fang says i followed them i was just like oh damn yeah it's on and that really subverted expectations like i i i thought it was just gonna follow this this path of like you know they followed you like you like and i and i was into it i was like yeah dude what are you doing why don't you be a little more careful sour fang walking around and you got a couple of stealthy a-holes following you to see where thrall lives it's like no he followed them here because they were coming to get you i mean it changes the whole tenor of the thing it's great it's really smart writing you're right Right, um, right, and 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 yeah, and like my gut reaction is like, how how dare she go after Thrall and his family, like endangering her, his family like that, and you know, it's uh, it it hits home unless you're really all in on the undead. Chat room, <laughs> chat room suggesting maybe he lied to convince Thrall of the danger. I don't know, maybe I think nah, that's reading too much nah. into it. Yeah, it seems unlikely. It's also not his character to lie. He's a he. This whole his entire arc is about him being true to his honorable self and not going down this other path that is not him so i don't think he would be faking it but here's the other thing when thrall turns around and realizes well i gotta go i gotta be dps or whatever (laughs) and he goes around (laughs) and he opens up that that hatch to get his weapon i thought at first he was going to open it and his wife and kid would be in there looking up going can we come out now is it safe is everything okay and it didn't happen so it was just a oh and then i thought it'd be the warhammer but then i couldn't remember where the hell that thing is and oh, Doom Hammer? The uh, Doom well, Hammer, yeah, rather. We got yeah. it as, as an artifact weapon, and then we, we threw it at the giant sword. <laughs> right. So it's gone. Uh, and so I, I was, like, immediately disappointed and then went, oh, yeah, right. That's He doesn't have that anymore. Instead, he's yes, got and, what is that's not Gorhal though. What is that thing he's got? No, that's a that's a new a new axe that okay. does not match any known famous Warcraft axe. All right. Appears to be. It's just hey, an axe. It's he's curious. been leveling up his blacksmithing. Clearly, he probably made it for himself. Right. That's true. Doesn't look very well done, though. I don't, you know, I'm not <laughs> very looks impressed. Orc is. Shit. It's pretty orky. I mean, everything about Thrall um, right now is very orky. Gone is the the robe and the big giant red pearl thing he used to wear, and all that shit's gone. He's like back to basics. Got some sweet gloves, big furry boots, shirtless. Do you see the little uh, hints of his purple armor poking yeah, out in the bit. cinematic and his and his legs? Yeah, that was bit. really cool. That was, was pretty nice good. Touch. Like he's still using all that old stuff, just for sh- shitty farmer boots now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, hey, I'm, hey, that's what 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 do you do with your your favorite shoes when they get grody? That's what you start mowing the lawn with. Yeah, you mow because they're going to get green and disgusting if you mow them once. So better not. They better not be your best shoes, is what I'm saying. But anyway, where they go from this is interesting. I'm excited about it and. I have to say, the entire Sour Fang arc from top to bottom, I really enjoy it. I like it a lot. It's been very slow coming. It's very piecemeal. We've talked about it on the show multiple times, how long Blizzard takes to get this stuff 
you know, in our faces, but in retrospect and given this latest thing, I really like where they've taken us with him and his journey. And it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm sure I, Alliance I, people are mad because there's not enough of their freaking side being shown. But Oh, man. Uh, well, my, my issue with Thrall has always been that he's, I've always found him a little boring and a little one note. Mm. And I think that's the biggest accomplishment of the cinematic is making Thrall interesting because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's he's flawed in this in this scene. Like we see a really uh, defeated Thrall who's just putting up all his guards and deflecting as much as he possibly can. Yeah. Uh, uh, whereas, you know, with the over on the Alliance side, Anduin uh, just puts me to sleep right now. I mean, so. he's in the Grand doing chores. It's like the, the most defeated leadership position of all time. And nobody nobody's asking for Thrall back, but I guess now we need him. So that'll be that'll be good. They yeah, only need yeah. they only need five more. Or no, three more for a for a dungeon run. And I don't know, another 10 for a good for a good raid. So, yeah. so yeah, I hope yeah. so, Sour Fang has been really well handled. I think this expansion. Yeah, he's cool. He's really cool. Whatever happened to the what's where, what's the deal with the blue uh... Zappy Boy? Yeah, Zappy Boy. Did he die? No, he's no, still... no. He's still around. Okay, he's still around. Kind of thought we'd get more of him. I don't know he why. did some quests with him uh, to uh, to go find Sour Fang. I think out in the swamp oh, of sorrows. Right. I think was the last time I saw him. Right, he was still there. You're right, but they. But I just mean story wise, it'd be cool if they. I don't know, those two are tooling around together like a bad, co- you know, buddy cop kind of movie. It, it would have been a little out of place in this particular cinematic. Just like, I didn't need Thrall going, who's that? And <laughs> going, oh, that's my buddy, Zappy Boy. We've kind of had this buddy cop thing going on. Yeah, uh, It's a long story. I'll tell you on the road back to, to, to Duratar. Oh, also, uh, this happens all the time in cinematics. They'll show something I wish was in the game, and it's not. But the ability to break a stealthed rogue's neck while he's stealthed would be awesome. Let's do that. Oh, Blizzard. that was, yeah, that was super. Also, just throw some, like, ash on another rogue to make them visible. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Oh, my gosh, that was cool. All right, well, I think we're all in agreement. Well done, Blizzard. That stuff's rad. You should keep making that. I think that bodes one well for the future. One of the best cinematics ever. Yeah, it's really, 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 really good. Put that out there. Put that all in one big string. I mean, this is a hell of a, hell of a binge. Uh for Battle of Azeroth at this point, if you're just talking cinematics, like it'd be really fun to go check one of those YouTube videos out where they just string them all together and watch them all. Uh, all right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And by elephant, I mean a creature that lives for a very long time. That's like WoW Classic. Well, the WoW Classic beta is live, and we have a release date. August 27th is the official release date of that. I don't know what that does, by the way, for the Warcraft 3 remastered launch. Um, in terms of timing, because they haven't gone, come anywhere near to saying when that's actually coming out, even though you can pre-order yeah, it. I was really hoping that I would get to uh, play through Warcraft 3 Reforged and then go immediately into Classic. Mm-hmm. That would have been cool. Although you I have, don't think that's going to happen anymore. You may have been let down by the graphics in the, in WoW Classic after playing a up looking cool, graphically enhanced <laughs> version of Warcraft 3. But anyway, uh, the beta is live right now. It started on the 15th or 16th, I think, uh, just yesterday. Yesterday? Day before 15th I think. Uh, two days ago yeah and uh it kind of took stream by storm or uh, twitch rather by storm and everybody was streaming it uh, if they had accounts out uh, uh, obviously they came out and made a big strong reminder that there are no such thing as beta keys this time around so do not believe any phishing emails you get saying hey i got a beta key because they don't exist this is account activation and if you want to be part of the beta you need to go into your battle.net account and activate your interest in it which you can do with a lot of their betas and stuff. Make sure you've done that because if you haven't done that, you're not getting considered. Um, they even had a they had some kind of um, summit for streamers and YouTubers. No podcasters, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, that was kind of a bummer to hear about after I mean, the fact. I, I didn't go. Did you go? <laughs> no, I didn't hear about it. I didn't know about it. So yeah, neither did I. <laughs> if they were doing a thing, nobody was told about it in our circles, but uh, there were a few streamers... Uh, you know, sort of high-level popular streamers and YouTubers who do a lot of WoW content that were invited to that summit and got to see a bunch of that stuff. Um, we'll get to all of that in a second. I will say this one thing. When I was checking out Twitch streams, uh, some of the worst chat rooms I've ever been in, like ever. And I've been in some rank <laughs> chat rooms on Twitch. But man, uh, whoo, just... It's a numbers game. Ugh. It like was it, bad, that- though. It was bad. I mean, I understand. you're right. It is a numbers game. There's a certain threshold. You hit it, and then Twitch chat is toxic no matter what you are or what you're doing. But 
these just seemed in particular just real rough. I would avoid it if I were people. That's just me. It, it, you're just describing Twitch chat at this point? I guess so. It's probably, yeah. And it's probably not fair yeah. to levy it at, at WoW Classic or these streamers in particular. It's just, it was the hot thing. Everybody got in there and it sucks. I think you're limited. I, mean, I think it's also, yeah. it, it's also a, you know, topic or, uh, I don't know, WoW has always been very not controversial but like people get so emotional about these things mm -hmm. and classic itself being a weird emotional thing i think that's you know not un completely unsurprised i don't think it's fer fertile ground fertile I ground's guess. a good way to put it i like that oh, oh, oh definitely unlike I mean, the grand. blizzard <laughs> blizzard this year wow this expansion uh classic post private servers like there's just so much uh, baggage that, that comes with this right. on top of uh it, when you tune into someone that has 100,000 viewers uh, i don't know imagine going to a, a big arena concert where every single person in attendance can be here heard just as loud and as clearly as the band yeah like just gotta turn it off i think my limit's about five if there's 500 people in there any more than that i can't do it if it's less than that i can probably deal with it because it's more community and whatever but if it's 500 plus yeah. freaking forget it you're out yep yeah, that's a that's a topic for another day and it is indeed things twitch should be doing that they're not uh, according to blizzard the beta will only have a small number of players uh but there will be <clears throat> stress test uh weekend in which larger pools of players can log in so they're going to do that although nothing was said about dates <clears throat> excuse me a new technology called layering will be used to smooth the launch it allows for them to have multiple versions of each of the two continents running as needed by the way the whole thing's only four gig uh, those were the days. Yeah, that was that is weird. Oh man, oh, that's lovely. Isn't that crazy though? I mean, I, I just downloaded. Sure Hearthstone is more on my phone. <laughs> that's what I mean. I've got like I downloaded some crappy little indie game yesterday that's not very big and all in eight bit graphics or whatever. That thing was four gigabytes. It's like what, what the heck? I can't remember WoW ever being that small, but apparently it was. No, no. WoW is the game that doesn't get. Uh, space on my SSD because it's yeah. just too big. It's pretty crazy. It says they are not cross realm and are only used so that the entire realm population isn't competing in one area at a time or to lessen login queues. Uh, the only way you can shift into a different layer is through party invites from others on your server, server who are on a different layer. So they're having to do a little bit of trickery there. So though. essentially, those are uh, layers, are uh, it's zoning, um, but just for population management. Yep. Right. It, it's basically phasing tech. Yeah. Um, phasing. Yeah. Not zoning. Yeah. Zoning is a different thing. Yeah. Phasing. A lot of people, uh, you know, raise their eyebrows at this because they're like, wait, I want my pure wow experience. And they're like, well, do you want it with horrible cues and awful crash times and all the those problems? Or do you want to get in and play? Right. So, it's, um, it, yeah. It's a, I look at this and I'm like, I get those concerns. You know, they, they, they Blizzard has really gone to extreme lengths to, to to make classic as true to the original experience as they, as they possibly could but but this is kind of necessary like i don't want to sit in a queue i don't want servers yeah. to crash right. like that's the thing just... the option is a queue system yeah and that's it like yeah. if you're right. if you prefer the queue system i think you're going a little bit far in your uh, right this, this is to the original experience yeah i'm looking at this as success insurance <laughs> like yeah. if, if classes classic is really successful this is going to make it a fun time to play it at launch whereas if it's successful it would stink to try and play it at launch yeah and they said they did say that once they've got you know at launch they've got populations under control and they feel good about it they turn that off once numbers are stable so they won't have this permanently it's just to get off the ground it's something they would probably wish they'd have had when they launched because you know every game like this has problems yeah. at launch dude i bet it's something they wish they had during burning crusade yeah because they funneled everybody into the same damn zone through the same damn gate yeah um <laughs> and funny enough actually i was thinking about this the other day because i was because i'm hoping that classic is successful when we get classic bc servers and eventually classic uh, lich king servers and i was like oh man what the hell are they gonna do for burning crusade because that was such a shit show when when it launched and and then this news came out a couple of days after I had that thought I'm like oh oh they already figured it out cool yeah they have a way to handle it so and the yeah. and the thing is you have to understand every person who has a WoW subscription right now is going to 
uh, create a character at launch when classic launches. Even people, I think, like us who are not necessarily interested in the game long term. Hey, 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 like Garrett. You. Garrett keeps saying this, okay. but I still think Garrett falls off after about a month. I think you're going to poop out. <laughs> Because you're going to get far enough, but, you're going to go, I mean, oh, this is okay. I'm grinding now. I'm going to go play. I'm going to go play the real, the new game. <laughs> I, but okay. Let's say even Scott, people like Scott and myself, who are probably not going to play for more than, you know, half an hour or an hour, maybe two. That means that the servers are going to be completely overloaded yeah. when it launches. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so they got to deal with that. And that's how they're doing it. And I'm totally fine with it. I think it's great. Yeah. They're also not going to have the same names, so they're doing classic servers will have brand new names for their realms. So there won't be an Arthas server, there won't be a Earthen Ring server. There'll be oh, totally man, new I names. I can't roll. I can't roll on Lightbringer like I did. Nope. Back in the day. They may maybe they'll just change it slightly. It'll be a you know light lightning bringer or something dumb. Uh, light bulb bringer. There you go. <laughs> Anything to just light. How about light burger? That'd be a good one. <laughs> there you go. Light burger. But they will uh, they want to avoid confusion, which I think makes sense. And they also don't have an exact number of servers yet, but they're flexible uh, as in terms of what they plan on doing. Um, In-game oh, items more. from... Oh, we got to talk about this. This is so exciting. We got to talk about the collector's edition. Oh, my God. I want that so much. All right. Oh, the one... Wait. The Look, 15 before, years? Before, yeah. Before we, so before we move to that, anything else you guys want to say about about classic so far players are like yeah it's freaking warcraft ass warcraft like that's what i'm hearing uh i didn't i'm not on the beta yet but uh if i do Same. i'll poke in there um, yeah i think I, we remember what what warcraft was you know yeah I mean, what, what world of warcraft was we we played it a lot um the, the only thing i i would like to say is it hasn't changed for me um it's very cool that people who want to play it can and i still think we'll see um but i still think it's not going to be we'll never know i guess but it's not going to be a big money ma maker for blizzard yeah um i think it is um there's not going to be a lot of people playing. I I don't know how you define a lot, but I would be surprised if it was more than a couple hundred thousand people playing it, mm. um, which I think is not a lot compared to the active population in WoW. But we'll yeah. see. Maybe I'll be wrong. And the thing is, we're going to get a number. The one number we're going to get is Blizzard coming out after the first weekend saying... Six million people tried World of Warcraft, created a character in World of Warcraft Classic, right? Mm -hmm. Which means nothing because all of us are going to go do it and stop playing after um, <laughs> a, a, a couple of hours. Right. So I don't think we're ever going to know how successful it is uh, long term. Well, they don't really give those numbers anymore anyway unless they're astronomical. Right. So it's possible yeah. that they, you're right. They'll, they'll talk about the initial login. Uh, I should also mention they want to preserve some of the things like collector's edition items that you would have gotten back in 2004 if you purchased the collector's edition, the Zerg pet, and what was the other thing you got? There was two pets. Uh, there was a Diablo pet, a Zerg pet, and a panda. Oh, that's right. Those those are only available if you get the collector's edition for retail. Uh, and if you already had it, if you have an original collector's edition on your vanilla WoW, or sorry, of vanilla WoW on your account... You can reaccess the pet rewards, but they're not going to re-release it for anyone who didn't get it. So for those who got that stuff, invested that stuff early, you'll get it. If you didn't and you missed that, they're not making it available in some other way. There was a, a time, and that time was many years in a row, where I obsessed over trying to get one of these and failed, and I have since put it out of my mind. <laughs> yeah. You'll be pissed at me then because I got a box unsealed, or sorry, an unopened collector's edition original one right over there that's still got its codes intact you're probably well, Scott, that never invite me to your home <laughs> <laughs> you want to get robbed while i'm there don't invite me um there will be no <laughs> tokens in classic wow but they will support realm transfer in classic through the current in-game service structure so you can do some realm moving um that is not something that was available at launch but hey it's a nice little feature they're going to take community feedback on how community is progressing and figure out when to proceed with content phases. Cross-realm PvP battlegrounds are included uh, when they launch in Phase 3. Uh, it says here, you cannot add a person of the opposing faction to your Battle.net friends list by right-clicking them in the game in Classic. You can do it outside of that, or if you already have them as friends, that's not going to change. But um, if you do it in the Battle.net launcher, you could do it there. 
And they said if Classic is successful and the community wants it, other Classic expansions could be on the table, which Garrett alluded to earlier. And yeah, that's uh, to, to Patrick's comments about they're going to you know spin it to be successful no matter what, and then we'll probably not hear numbers again. I don't care about any of that. I just hope it's successful enough to warrant BC Classic. Yeah, I agree. All right, we're going to jump around a little bit here because I want to. I still want to hit the JL and Brock stuff, but I want to hit this pre-order stuff first. Pre-ordering of the World of Warcraft 15th Anniversary Edition, Collector's Edition. It is sold out now? So, it, yeah, it was sold out when they announced it, basically. <laughs> so they're done. Can I? Are they never going to do another run, or are they, are they done? No, they no, updated, there's going to be many runs, I think. Okay. They updated the post uh, shortly after being like, hey, GameStop and Amazon, go get it there, and it's uh, that's also sold out. So I have... I have heard nothing about additional runs, so I don't know. Did any of us? I am of the anyone. I it? was of the belief that it's it's over. Yeah, <laughs> that all the ones that they were going to sell have already been claimed. It, it but seems like in Europe we've been getting uh, additional rounds uh, regularly, but I don't know that it means it will be common. That's true. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I That's really right. want that Ragnaros statue. It's really cool. It's guys. pretty good. The Rag statue is really cool. Um, they say this. also. Oh yeah, go ahead. It is a uh, collector's edition for a uh, something without a game. Yeah, weird. So there is no game <laughs> no, there in isn't. that uh, collector's edition. Nope. It's just, would, would you like to give us $100 to get excited about yeah. 15 years of World of Warcraft? And the answer exactly. is yes. Yeah. Yes, I would. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I totally would. would. Yeah. Not only will I do that, but also I will fight very hard to try and find a place where it's not sold out. Yeah. I uh, don't know where to look. I mean, I, I assume I'm going to have to wait until somebody restocks or blizzard says we're doing another run or something but <laughs> currently the uh behold ragnaros uh statue uh he who is ancient when this world was young bow mortals before his 10 plus inch immortalization of the fire lord himself so there's that and it's really cool like that it's thing looks statue. legit unlike those terrible looking uh figurine things you're getting at blizzcon and your in your goodie bag I don't. I don't mind them. They're I don't, terrible. I, need to see them in They're I don't terrible. mind. Terrible. They look like plastic poopa. They're not good. <laughs> plastic poopa. Yeah, they don't look good. They look like poop. Uh, I like the stylization. I think it's kind of kind of cool. All Except, right. uh, oh wait, never mind. Doesn't matter. Oh, uh, all right. Ignore me. Ignore okay, me. all right. They don't have penises. Is that what you're gonna say? It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping for a 3D rendered uh, a piece of orc junk. Yeah, uh, an anatomically correct rendition of the character you love so much for so long. I get it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you get an Anixia pin. Uh, more. Uh, <laughs> I was going to do a dumb joke about the guy that used to say more more dots, but I couldn't think of anything funny, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, add to your pin collection and adorn your home with the head of Anixia, brood mother of the Black Dragonflight. So that's, oh, that's just a little pin, right? Yeah, it's, it's just not, a pin. You don't like pins, Patrick? It's not incredible. You don't like pins? Well, I mean, it's fine, but... You know, in a hundred dollar thing, that's not the thing I'm going to be paying attention to. If I'm being honest, there's actually not much I want to pay attention to in that hundred dollar thing. It's really just the um, the the statue. Yeah, right? that's kind of it for me too. Yeah. Well, I like. I don't the think the mounts are particularly cool. I think the mounts are kind of lame. The I alabaster. Oh, mounts? I like them. Oh, they're cool. Personally. I like those alabaster yeah, mounts. I, like I mean, you, what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, okay. I will say that I had this one thought when I first saw them. I said, "Oh, alabaster mounts, cool." And then I saw them and went, "It's like they just have a couple of other mounts they didn't have to skin." <laughs> that's kind of what they are. <laughs> they're basically that's why they're lame. Yeah, like, and they're going to have the same organic movement, even though they look like they're made out of stone. Uh, not, not, not for me. Yeah, I, I just know. want the Ragnaros statue. That's all I want. They look really cool statically, but I think you're right. And in, in actual movement, it's just going to look like unskinned, untextured models. Is what that, that would look be. really cool in a game like God of War, where they have the the tech to make stone moving look cool. Yeah, uh, and like it should. But in in World of Warcraft, it's just going to look like a like you wrapped a car in fake marble texture. Actually, thanks for saying that. It's one of the unsung things about God of War was that stone tech is freaking top notch. Nobody makes cooler mm. stone shit than that game. That and their uh, skinning the front of a werewolf tech was pretty solid too. Yeah, that's true. They did a good job there. <laughs> uh, you also get a map of Azeroth mouse pad. Uh, that'll get you, Patrick. Get that. That's now you're now you're in. Uh, gaze upon the realms of your characters <laughs> and what he's explored over these past 15 years while you prepare for the next adventure. You get fine art prints. You get 30 days of game time. That's kind of cool. 
That's oh, I forgot about the fine art wow. prints. Yeah, I you would like, like those. Pat, uh, Garrett likes art. I like art. I'm down with it. Oh, I like art. I'm just like the 30, ga- 30 uh, days of game time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's 15 bucks, I guess, but yeah. Yeah. It's a little added value to the <laughs> the, the box with no game in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. By the way, the Alabaster mounts, the Storm Talon is the Alliance one, and Thunderwing is the Horde one. The cooler looking one, I think, is the Alliance one, actually. The other one's just another. It looks like the the taxi mount, um, the wyverns to me. Like there's nothing special about that horde mount, but that I don't know. There's something about a big stone eagle looking thing that's that's rad. So well done, Alliance. You got the better end of that deal, I think. Anyway, uh, who knows if they'll be back on sale? Hopefully they will be, and soon. Okay, can't believe it's been 15 years either. That's freaking me out. Uh, that is the. Yeah, weird earth. Isn't that weird? Oh man, fifteen. Yeah, and you know that twelve and, of that. And, and you know what's even weirder? What? In five years, it will be twenty <laughs> years. <laughs> what the frick? That's incredible. Also, hey, I do you have in your notes the um the event, the in-game event that we're also going to get oh, and the reward for that? Right. I event? didn't. Uh, I didn't detail it. It's part of this thing, I think, but um. Why don't you tell people about it, Patrick, since you know more than me well, about it? Well, essentially, there's going to be an in-game event. We don't know what it's going to entail exactly, but it will uh, have a reward, which is a mini Deathwing, which is incredible looking. And I think it's very um, intentionally, uh, the news was released at the same time as the $100 collector's edition with no game to make sure that people would could not say hey you're not giving anyone to the people who aren't paying you mm. but the deathwing mount i think looks amazing and yeah. I'm, I'm oh very yeah, yeah. The, the, the world breaker mount yeah is yes, absolutely yes. incredible there's also what i uh, i think a nefarian whelpling to mm-hmm. get picked up yeah, yeah that, little nefarian yeah that one's cool too yeah i mean the yeah, fact yeah. that after all this time we can actually write on a mount that looks like deathwing or is deathwing is pretty exciting i mean the closest it's we had to this really before was model. what like uh uh arthas's freaking uh, mal what's her name sandra so, sandra well, gosa there were all kinds of yeah frost worms to get picked up in, in lich king but um, was any of them actually, was any of them actually her though i can't remember um i mean there's there's it's the same model uh right. no none of the we kill sandra gosa so but, that wouldn't make any sense and is this mount well, is this mount called deathwing or is it it's just called no. the world breaker okay. obsidian world breaker all right so it's not really. But damage. it's basically like, Deathwing. I just like the idea that it would be, we beat him so bad that now I can ride him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you, it's a very cool mount. Yeah, I, uh, it's very. Whatever sexy. I need to do, I will be. I will oh, be. Uh, I will be playing that. Oh, it looks like the there'll be a twenty-five player raid to celebrate fifteen. Yeah. I I missed that part. I just looked at the mount. Yeah. Yep. The, and the, that that's how you're going to be able to. Uh, be able to get this mount they don't say what the anything else about the raid though like it could be a greatest hit sort of thing time walking style yeah, they, no they do say you're gonna beat bosses from the history of, of wow don't where they? did they say that yes, i, I they, missed all that uh, then. Th- this raid will pit players against some of the most iconic bosses from throughout the game's history wow all right i wh- how are cool. they doing this are we just gonna phase between raids that'd be really cool i don't know how i missed that oh they can put them in one room you know <laughs> just so one okay, room. now it's the ragnaros room <laughs> well yeah no you, you do it like it's, it's like sh- like a shattered universe kind of thing um or caverns of time or something but you just you know recreate those moments and and i don't know what this what the what the context would be or why it's I happening be, i would be very impressed i'll say this hmm. so, i would be very impressed if they made new like a new zone for this i'm pretty sure that we're just kind of maybe port between fight locations yeah because i mean so many boss fights are very specific to the room that they take place in yeah i would room when rooms are mechanics too right like it's not just exactly yeah i mean if you fight arthas uh the the freaking sides fall off yeah um yeah, if you're gonna do uh, if you, when i said one room i meant one room per boss and you move from room to room yeah. mm, gotcha 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 yeah i i would just assume that they would just be some sort of of porting mechanic that would get you to those fights but whatever the case is this sounds really fun i wish that the mount for uh uh what's his bucket the world breaker mount um 
I wish that you could you could occasionally flick little orcs off your wings and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because you remember that <laughs> intro where they're like all working on them and then he freaks out and they all get tossed into the into the goo. I want that. I want it to occasionally be like bugs on you, like ah, there's orcs over here, and just and they go flying off that way. I great. just want the mount to randomly scream pain and agony ah. at the top of his lungs <laughs> and like cause my speakers to peek out. <laughs> That's what I want. Pain. Oh, that's such a good intro. I love that. All right. Uh, I, think, I think it's actually my least favorite cinematic. But yeah. Is it really? I love that one. It's, oh, really? Why? Yeah, the but... world is super barren. There's like no one in the world. Like he's trashing the world and no one's there. There's no one on the docks in Dark Shore. There's no one on that boat that flips over in Stranglethorn Vale. Uh, it's, uh, it's, I don't, it's, not, it's not my jam. I don't know. I mean, they're all amazing. Right, like one of them has to be not as good, and uh, I call I call cataclysm. As okay, the... I see what you're saying. It's like saying, uh, let's look at all the MCU movies in that context. There's one that's the best, and maybe one that's the not the best, but it's still, it's only within that list. If you compare it to anything else, it's right, higher. Right. Right? I uh, get, it. I get what you're three... saying. Uh, there's three Lord of the Rings movies that are all masterpieces. Uh, one of them's not as good as the rest, and it's Return of the King. That's it. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> we, we're going to have words, you and I. Because it definitely I isn't. I, I'll tell you the worst one. It's Two Towers. Come at, me. Come at me about Two Towers. That's a horrible one. That's the worst two one. Two Towers is the best one. It's sleepy. It's so sleepy. <laughs> I want to sleep through the whole thing. It's so tired. It has Helm's Deep, man. Helm's Deep is amazing. Helm's Deep is good. I'm saying it has its moments, but so does. I don't know. Catwoman. Actually, I, I find myself, right. uh, the older I get, the more Fellowship becomes my favorite Lord of the Rings movie. Fellowship of the Ring is pretty dang good. I guess I'll agree with you there. Anyway, that's why I love subjective opinions. In the end, it doesn't matter. We're all friends. <laughs> I'm going to sign a 500 person or 500,000 person. Uh, uh, what, what's, it, what's it called? What did they sign for the Game of Thrones thing? It's called a petition. I'm going to oh, sign a petition, petition to uh, fight you. It's called you. A, a piece of paper for dumb people to put their names on. Ding. Well said. All right. Someone's going to get mad at that. That's fine. I don't care. Let's uh, move on to this thing about J. Allen Brack. He sat down with Forbes magazine. Mm. <laughs> this interview is so lame. <laughs> All right. Oh, interesting. All right. We have a preview from uh, from Garrett already. Let's see where it uh, kind of went, uh, what happens here. it's all, A lot of it is very corporate speak. J. Allen Brack wants fans to know that the company has more in development than any other point in their history, and their commitment to quality remains. Uh, says that Mike Morhine stayed on an advisory role to Brack and told him all the things he was going that he was doing wrong. Uh, they want the company to outlive all of them. And so it is only natural at some point for other people to take take over. Mike Morheim continued Boy, some, to be... Go some, ahead. Some really bold statements here. Yeah. Like, yeah. we want the company to be successful. Wow. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> really, really taking a chance with this interview, Mr. Brack. It's very top layer stuff. They don't, you know, they don't... Something with Forbes like this, like they're not going to get into the nitty gritty and talk about, you know, Diablo Immortal and, and the reasons why that was a mistake. They're going to talk more about, we've never been more committed to Blizzard's core, well, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I Patrick. think the, the couple of things that are interesting are that they are reiterating their commitment to having many, many games uh, being in development right now, mm. right? It's, it's not, we're not shifting to mobile and doing just that. Yeah. We're doing a lot of games, including PC, which we knew, I guess, but he's saying it again. Yeah, he's reiterating. He also says that the fact that two veteran Blizzard developers are now leading Blizzard should ease concerns uh, that development has been overwhelmed by financial concerns in recent years. Their core mission in creating amazing games with players uh, with a commitment to quality has not changed with the leadership. Now, when he says two, who's yeah, he talking about? That's... Is he talking about Frank, Frank Pierce? Who's he, who does he mean? No, no, it's... Uh, oh, who's the producer? Um... Is it Gresco? I can't remember. I apologize. I can't remember, but the, it's Brack and there's someone else. I, that's the thing. I don't know who this someone else is. There's two. Who would um, that other person be? Because uh, as is far it as Ray Gresco? I don't think it's Ray Gresco. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> what I think we were saying, or at least what I was saying when they announced it. They could have easily put a an Activision or financial type person in charge of the company. Of course, that would have been uh, met with a lot of uh, um, doubt, <laughs> let's say politely. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it does mean something that it's the guy who was in charge of WoW for many, many, many years who's the president. Oh, it's uh, Alan Adham. 
Oh. No. Well, wait, no, no, but no. he's not. Adam the... is in charge of the. Is in charge of the. Um, yeah, he's the incubator the, lord, the incubator. and he's also the he's the original founder of the company, but came back to do yeah. that. I don't think he. Yeah, but isn't isn't his official title still like senior VP? I don't know. Oh, there are tons of senior VPs, but because mm. isn't no, technically there, there's uh, Adham and Pierce are uh, the founders, co-founders of the company, yeah. along with Morheim. Yeah, but um, yeah, there there is someone else who's not as much in the limelight. But uh, if you got stuck in an elevator with Frank Pierce, what would be the first thing you'd say to him? Just curious. This is gonna be. A I would a... say nothing and pray that he doesn't get angry at me. <laughs> That was kind of where I was driving. That was exactly what I thought you'd say. Because that's how I feel about it. He scares me. He intimidates me. I mean, I'm I'm sure he's a very nice person, but all of the very few interactions I've had with him, you know, he seems like a grouchy grandpa. Um, Uh. (laughs) Which, you know, I I don't know how nice he actually is, but he's like grumpy and I don't know. He was he's he's the only person I've ever met at Blizzard, and I've met a few, including, you know, famous developers and, and people we admire. He's the only person who uh, I was actually a little bit not uncomfortable, but like, ooh, I, I don't know what to say, and I feel nope. you're going <laughs> to yell at me. Yeah. The word I would use is intense. He's very intense. He, yeah. He comes off as intense. The only time he really comes out on stage is to say something very intense, and then he leaves and then looks very intense for the rest of the day, and yeah, he's a... He's a mm-hmm. he's a guy I would not want to be stuck in an elevator with. I'm sure in the end of the at the end of the day, he's like anybody else. I'm sure he's fine, but he scares me. Oh yeah, I'm sure too. But yeah, he just scares me. Um, they go on to talk about the NetEase relationship and how they think that's going to be good. I mean, it's all you know. This is all PR speak, um, pretty much. They also uh, touched on one thing that I thought was interesting. Out of house outsourcing is not a strategic priority for Blizzard. They have utilized it for other games such as StarCraft Remastered, but it's not something that they want to do. Um, so that's interesting because that's what a lot, a lot of companies, that is what they're doing now. They are outsourcing tons of stuff, including development. Blizzard doesn't want to do that so much. Pretty pretty standard for the industry as a whole. Yeah. Although Immortals kind of that, I mean. Oh yeah, totally. So, Um, but that's a case again, where like, I look at that as a positive. Like if you don't like, if you're one of the people who quickly turn to, studios making games that you don't like because you wish the effort was being put elsewhere uh, it should be at least some solace knowing that it's not teams at blizzard really being pulled to work on immortal yeah this is all true uh Bl- also immortal yeah. was fine like it played really well it's fine for what it is it's fine you guys it was just a bad bad presentation a very tone deaf yeah. weird presentation that should have been uh in the middle of the opening ceremony or buried it in the middle do it at Gamescom, or do it at PAX, or do it off air like, or off stage. Like, do it somewhere. Or else. let's not rehash that entire thing. Hey, why not, yeah. Patrick? Let's go back and let's dig a hole. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go find my axe and head out and uh, get the. Wait, save it for this year, and they go, and you can download it and play it right now because that would have been such a better way to just. Oh yeah, shell if that it was out. if it was playable that day, it'd be a lot less complaining because it would have just yeah, been a cool thing to do. I think it was. It was fairly cert they were certain it would leak at some point oh yeah mm, i really didn't true. which is crazy is it bad yeah. that i knew about it the day before and didn't tell anyone <laughs> uh, is that bad no that that, that means no, you can that's... be trusted and will probably be invited to do other things for blizzard <laughs> yeah i did know about it but i didn't say anything to anyone yeah i uh oh god yeah i um i had a similar run-in with uh the with League of Explorers for Hearthstone. Hmm. So we got to visit the studio and there was key art out and I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Why didn't you ever use this art for anything? It didn't have the logo and I'm just there being an idiot <laughs> thinking it was art that they never used for anything. And then the next day <laughs> they announce it and I'm like, oh, I'm dumb. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, what did they know. say when you were like, oh, why didn't you use it? Uh, like, oh, this is back when Ben Bro was still there and he was like, just keep walking. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't say anything. Yeah, it was good. We were on our way to see their conference room, which was named the Angry Chicken in honor of the show, which, which seemed good. Oh, that's awesome. Is that true? Awesome. Is it really yeah. in honor of the show? That's really yeah, great. Yeah, th- that's what we're told. They may that have just been awesome. uh, being nice to us, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, t- they told us that's that. That's really uh, cool. Yeah, their conference that's room. That's very was, cool. I like that a lot. At the time, I think they have a better setup now, but I think that's where they used to call in when they would guess on the show. Oh, all right. 
They have a better space now. I think they're all using that little. Um, they all have definitely upgraded yeah. their, uh, their 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 setups for sure. Because yeah. the last few times we've had like Peter Whalen on, like they've got a really nice condenser mic set up and nice. it's solid. Well, good for them. Because for a while there, whew, Blizzard took a while to get that stuff right. Uh, final note, he says Blizzard's goal is to create something great, whether it is with a current IP or an entirely new one. Some uh, says something to work on is figuring out. Uh, the challenges of having many different kinds of games in development to make de intelligent decisions on the next steps for each project. It's all, again, very boilerplate, but whatever. At least they're getting out there and talking, and it's probably a good time to be doing that. And um, water is wet and the sky is blue. All of those things are absolutely true. Now let's do this. There are other things happening around Blizzard. We will hit Overwatch first. There's not a lot new going on, except I guess there's something I missed about Oh, chat room was talking about it earlier. Patrick, maybe you know about this. I, 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 before the show started is when I heard, and I didn't have time to jump in and check on it. But there's something going about on. What? Some kind of invite thing for Overwatch. Some kind of beta invite what? deal. Oh, n no, it's not. I mean, the workshop, what I know is, is it? the Forge. Oh, that's... The Forge. Right. Isn't that called Workshop? I think Forge is... is in, it the Workshop? I thought it was the Forge. I thought maybe Forge is a one. Halo thing. Wait, do I have that wrong in my head? I don't know. I mean, I mean, it was also a Halo, Halo thing. thing. And, uh, yeah. Okay. It was definitely a Halo thing. <laughs> yes. But, it but could it's also... I, yeah, I don't think they... Uh, I, don't, I don't think they copyrighted Forge. <laughs> yeah. I can't find it, though. Um, so do you, do you want to know what it is? Yeah, or? tell me what's going on. I mean, I know about the workshop and what it's going to allow people to do, but is this just... Are they letting okay. people use it yet? Is it in the game in any form yet? Like, what's the deal with it? Yeah, you can... Uh, I mean, it's uh, on PTR... Wait, now I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't tried it myself, but I know people are doing uh, stuff with it already. So maybe that's the invite-only part. Might um, be. Might be. But yeah, people are designing game modes which are fairly original and different from what you can do. The thing is, the Forge is scripting, but it does not allow you to import assets. So mm. no graphics, no going to um, uh, modify the geography of the world. You can't import sound or anything like that so it's really uh i guess limited in what you can do but there's still a number of things that it allows you to do draven dresden in the chat says worst workshop idea ever bastion firing bobs i disagree that's the best idea ever <laughs> yeah there's stuff like <laughs> you have stuff like uh i think a famous one is uh turb uh turrets firing turbulence <laughs> and uh there's there's stuff like um a ping system that's been implemented there's a bunch of stuff like it's fairly robust it can do a lot of things um so it's a, so it's, a, it's basically modding but in a sandbox i mean it's modding well it's not a sandbox it's just that you can't um have art assets added uh, at all yeah, or that's modify I, the existing that, that's what i mean it's like it's it's trapped in it's walled in but within those walls it's scripting yeah 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 that's great well, I'm into it. there goes my hope for a lingerie clad genji <laughs> what you yeah, dream sorry have you dreamt about this or what's the what's the deal <laughs> super into it eh uh, all right you know i like it you know, teach their own scott teach their own i did confirm it is called workshop it is not called the forge i don't oh. know why we all thought right. it was the forge but there's some Forge language in the game, but I think that's the Forge inside of a map. Like, the, one of the maps has a big Forge in it. And now I don't know which one that is. Well, whatever. So that's the thing. That's cool. I'm actually really excited about that. So it reminds me of my old Quake days when scripty, weird stuff would happen and we'd install it and do wacky stuff in games. This will obviously, obviously be a lot more uh, user-friendly and you'll be able to use codes, is my understanding, from people's creations. Yeah. And then suddenly you have so you all can of it. Enter, you can enter a code, and that creates the, the game mode for you. Um, there are modes like uh, something called zombies, where you play soldiers mm -hmm. that can only run. That's all you can do. And uh, when you get there's one Reaper. And when you get killed by Reaper, um, you become a Reaper. Oh, cool. And so the last soldier that's there wins. That's so that's the level of... That's great. Uh, customization you can expect from this thing. That's great. Bastion shooting multiple bobs. Sign me up. I'm in. Uh, Hearthstone. It. All right, Garrett, do I want to play Dalaran Heist Part 1 and 2 or not? You want to give them your money right now, Scott. 
Really? Tell me. Okay. Yeah. All the talk has been, hey, this is, they're working on something that plays like Slay the Spire, uh, more of a deck builder yeah, well, kind of thing. I haven't played Slay the Spire, so I can't, I can't speak to how how spire-esque it is or is not all, right. um, all i can say that as uh the grumpiest grump you've ever known in regards to hearthstone single player uh, i really like dalaran heist hmm. it's really good give me the quick How's rundown it different of what, from runs yeah from what Dungeon what is the difference tell, tell us uh there's they've actually improved oh you guys locked up right then really really right that second this is like the worst timing uh, where the, you know, there's a little bit of a narrative device. There's some funny, witty writing, um, but you're building a deck like a dungeon run. Uh, but there's way deeper systems to actually manipulate your deck as you are in the middle of the run. And uh, there's all nine classes to play uh, that are in the game, and then each class has three hero powers you can unlock and four decks total you can unlock for all nine classes. Uh, so. That's already before you even start your run. That's how much customization you have before you even hit go. Okay. Um, and also, you have to unlock these things through quests. So even if, say, you are to not complete your run because, say, boss eight kicks your butt, you're still completing these quests and unlocking things for these heroes. So it doesn't feel as bad now when you when you lose to that eighth boss. I, mean, I, I would imagine once you unlock everything, it'll probably still feel pretty bad to lose to that eighth boss, which is always a big gripe of mine. But they've certainly improved it majorly in that regard mm. um and then on top of all of this i believe twice during your run you you stop into what they're calling like tavern encounters and they're they're like friendly encounters there's no combat you you go and you talk to a tavern keep they put out cards uh you randomly put out some cards and you can get rid of cards that you don't like in your deck you can take cards from the bartender and put it into your deck you, there's cards that let you buff your own cards permanently for the rest of the run uh, and then you can also copy cards that you like and it puts more copies in your deck so you, you can like do these weird combos in this non-combat encounter where you buff a card and then add three more copies of it to your deck and it and it keeps that buff permanently for the you, whole run. You're describing it's Slay the nuts. Spire. You're, you're literally describing it. That's fantastic. Okay, cool. Haven't played it, so I didn't know I no, was doing No, this is that, great news. Yeah. This is really good news to me because I love that, that kind of deck builder. It's a different approach to, to cards and decks and I love it. And let me ask you this. Is there any procedural randomness to it? In other words, do you branch off? Do you Can you choose different paths between? Um... You can't choose different paths. Okay. But the, the, the bosses that you're fighting are still randomly selected, as they always have been with dungeon runs. Okay, so it kind of works that way anyway. Yeah, so there's, there's five chapters of eight boss runs. Uh, and there's also heroic mode. There's a like a modified mode. I, what do they call it? Uh, it's like anomaly, I mm. think is what they're calling it, where mm. you can play with like a weird twist on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a lot of content here. And you're getting cards to keep. And you're getting the new legendary that gives you decks to play with. And they're weird. And um, Well, that was I, my I, other I'm, question. I'm, so actual rewards. I'm like you're, you're rewarded at the end of these fights. It's not just, hey, that was fun. Do it again. You're getting real rewards uh, this time. W w the, the the card packs that you get, you only unlock those once. You can't keep getting card packs out of this thing. Do you There's get a gold? finite amount of card packs. Do you get gold or any kind no. of anything? No, 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 no. You mm. get you get card packs per chapter, a mm. finite amount. The other things you're unlocking are things like new decks for the heroes to use in the dungeon run, new hero powers for the heroes to use in the dungeon run. Okay. Still sounds a lot better than what they were before. It is. It is. It is way better. I mean, from dun the the three dungeon runs that they did were all essentially the same, and yeah. I never played any of them past the first one because, well, I dipped my toe in the second one that they put out, and I'm like, this is just the same thing. Mm. Uh, they didn't. They didn't go deep enough uh, with it. So how how um, much? Yes, it, sorry. How much? Uh, what's cost on this thing? What are people? Uh, nineteen ninety nine US. Okay, for those first two chapters. No, for the whole thing. For the entire oh, for the entire thing, they're just gonna the, they're just piecemeal. The, the first it out. chapter is free. The second chapter is available right now. You can you can unlock the four additional chapters with gold if you don't want to spend money, or you can okay. just pay twenty bucks and you get the whole darn thing. All right, I think I'm gonna play Hearthstone later. Yeah, you you should, man. I was streaming it last night. I don't stream Hearthstone. I hate it because I'm, I'm I'm not the best. Everyone's like, oh, you do a Hearthstone show. I'm like, no, man. I'm the casual guy on that show. Like. I'm not that good, and I sweat like a sinner in church <laughs> streaming my Hearthstone games. But I was streaming the crap out of single player last night because it was it, it is so much fun. All right, well, you've convinced me. 
Patrick, you going to play more Hearthstone now? Are you in? You back in? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I yeah. finally tried uh, Slay the Spire yeah. a couple of days ago. Yeah. And it was very much a uh, satisfying single player version of Hearthstone, which I guess I'm I already know Hearthstone. I've played it nonstop for two years. And I think I've had my fill and my fill is still filled. That's um, crazy. You see so, you so you see Slay the Spire is just more Hearthstone. That's insane. I mean Slay the Spire no, is No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying Slay the Spire is a very well designed uh, version of a card game that is focused on single player, but it's still a, a st card strategy game. It absolutely is. You have a is, boss, yeah. you have to beat, but and in you that have game, cards, and yeah, but in that game you have you have a deck, and you build upon that deck every run. So in other words, it's not a bunch of cards you had to collect to, to say, "Ooh, I've got the perfect deck going into this." The way Hearthstone and other t uh, CCGs sure. are, it's more like it's more like a deck of like playing cards to play poker you're going to get you know what yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. in there and then you enhance it during that run and you boost cards and all of that it's like a very i don't know why that appeals but to me moment so much to but moment gameplay is still card strategy like you have to decide yeah. okay i have this hand at the moment i have to use this card before this one and get this synergy and this buff you're and, right you know it's the, the round is kind of the the way your brain is supposed to function is very similar to the way your brain functions when you have you know, one round of Hearthstone. You're totally fight. right. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Well, I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to try it. I want to see what's up. Uh, Games Radar gave it this quote. Hearthstone has outdone itself with the dollar on heist. It's best single player roguelike yet. Ooh. I guess maybe I should give it a try. I don't know. You're you're both. I mean, I, I mean, the first chapter is free. There's there's yeah. no buy in required to, to, to give it a shot, man. So it's <laughs> like, listen, Jeez. it's like a card that you have to put in your deck uh, in Hearthstone. You're like, oh, this card is awesome. I should definitely put it in my deck. But you're putting that card instead of another one. Mm -hmm. So there's a, an opportunity opportunity cost there. And playing Hearthstone is spending time playing that game and not playing another game that you might want to play. Mm. So that's the cost there. That's a good point. Yes, well, luckily it is on your phone, and I mean, what else do you play on your phone? Pff, so. Nothing right now. Well, actually, actually not Twitter. True. I'm, I'm playing... It's a, it, Twitter <laughs> is a fantastic phone game that you cannot win. Yeah. It's the there's, hardest... There's, no matter what you do, you lose yeah. at that game. It yeah. is, there, never has there been a more intense PvP game oh, than Twitter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, I am playing a game on there called let's see, Pirates Outlaws, it's called. And it's basically Slay the Spire, which sounds a lot like this Dollar on Heist. So if you're if you're like, man, I wish I had a cool mobile version of what you guys are talking about, uh, that's outside of Hearthstone, I guess. <laughs> so you can just play what you're talking about. <laughs> but if you're looking for something different that is like not them, and it's a simple focus, uh, that one's a very Slay the Spire experience, and it's really good. You'll get super hooked on it. Uh, and it's and it's not free to play garbage. You can just pay for it and play it. Um, all right, uh, uh, that's it. Oh, uh, real quick, Anduin is awesome in Heroes of the Storm, and I just wanted to make that point because a lot of people aren't talking about him, and I don't even like him as a character in general, uh, but his kit and his play style in Heroes of the Storm is fantastic. If you're a healer especially, um, he's great. Uh, we're winning. I'm winning games with that guy, and I like him a lot. So there's that. All right, let's do this. Hear ye, hear ye. Why, it's the town crier. <laughs> oh, he turned, he turned 19 yesterday, the town crier. Think of that. Pretty weird, uh, right? My mortality is becoming more and more real. I know. All, every day. I know. When I started playing WoW, that kid was three and a half years old. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. Wow. Uh, time. Time is weird. Hey, these are emails we got. The instance at gmail.com is where they sent them, and we're going to read them on the show. Like this one from somebody named Orp Frog. Or no, sorry, Orp Flog. He says, Hi, you fellas. Here are a Wait, couple of. Is it Orc Frog or Orp Flog? It's Orp with a P, Flog, like F L O G. Orp Flog. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you for, for that precision. I'm happy. I, I think it was yeah. I'm happy important. to give you what you need, Patrick. Whatever you need, I'm here for you, buddy. 
Uh, hiya, fellas, says Orp Flog. Here's a couple of questions that I have been thinking of. Number one, how fast will it take for a person to reach level 60 in Classic? And what will be the average amount of time it will take to reach 60? Um, the first person will be nuts and just play for, like, straight, It will, you know. Like, what do so you think? It'll be like it used to be. There's, there's, there's one thing people don't realize. They have kept the leveling roughly equivalent to level to max level throughout all of the expansions right um so it's not like it takes twice as long to level from 0 to 120 than it did from 0 to 60 so it will probably be about the same time as it does to level someone from 0 to 120 mm -hmm. which is i don't know two three days yeah let's not more see. than that um casually um, that, the, the estimate casually is four to five days if you're I don't know. That seems fast. It took me first a thing I pulled. I don't even remember. I, I was just. I'm looking on the forums right now, and the consensus on this particular thread I found is uh, roughly ten days played. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No, I think that's right. Um, people will. People will group up. They'll do AOE uh, a mob gathering. I don't think it will be ten days played. Let me see. Maybe, well, you know, I think we'll this thread is mostly talking about people who play normally. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you right, probably right. have not, that for. But that's for, not the question. The question is, how do you think? How long will it take I'm for? I'm trying to work through it. Well, Patrick. he asked both questions. He says, "How long for the guy who's first versus how long for your average player?" And I would say your average player, let's say seven to ten days, if they're if they're focused on you know so, chunks of playtime. If you're a psycho, you'll probably do it in the first forty eight hours or something weird. I uh, I played for about a year and a half before BC hit, and I only reached level forty-two. Granted, <laughs> I did not know what I was doing. Right, uh, I was a hunter. Yeah, my my I didn't know that I could up the talent levels on my pet, which really made it hard. <laughs> and I was playing the wrong spec. I was survival. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would imagine I would go a lot quicker this time around. Um, it's also a lot of but, talk in some of these threads about how fifty-eight through sixty took six days for people to do. Uh, so it gets even crazier once you once you ping 60 the, the high levels took a long time mm -hmm. uh if you weren't you know gaming the system with some kind of you know big like zone pulls in a group but okay yeah. maybe i don't remember it correctly then. i my memory is it took a long time like this one says uh, this guy's saying about a month of casual play but he's not giving any sort of data to back that up so there's probably even a way to take your your time played or your slash played there's probably some mod or something out there that'll tell you what what and where you spent your time and how long it took you in certain zones or something i don't know maybe not it's it's here's the thing like we know how to play it correctly now so it's going to be shorter for most of us than it was back in the day but i still think it's going to be longer than a lot of us are thinking yeah uh, for, the, for the general players uh neax of garona that's the server says hey there's scott garrett uh maybe patrick and possibly terpster Sorry, <laughs> three out of five or three out of four ain't bad. With classic quickly approaching, I'm feeling hopeful. Hopeful that we'll hear uh, the end of the long used excuse that WoW's very poorly aged geometry situation can't be updated because of nostalgia. Uh, the current art style, especially in Kulturas, is incredible in my opinion, as it feels like walking through a painting. And I love to see more of the same sort of updates that Arathi and Darkshore have received. I imagine an uh sorry an up to date Ungoro or Elwyn Forest that has more of the vibe envisioned by the Warcraft movie. Just the thought of it makes me want or sorry, just the thought of it makes my one time would be inner three D artist stupidly happy. What do you all think? Will classics release finally free us from Scott's often complained about N sixty four tier trees? Cheers, Neax. I mean I do not think. Yeah. What? At all, or no? I, I, I don't. No, I don't think Classic will free us from this. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't either. I think. Uh, I mean, I think Classic. I mean, I've always. I've said since day one of Classic's announcement, I want them to do the Halo uh, redo edition thing, where you could buy a push of a button, switch from original Xbox graphics to, you know, the modern uh, remaster, and that was really cool that they did that. It was a really neat thing. I think that is probably technically. A hurdle that is maybe not impossible, but ridiculously out of reach for Blizzard to do that with something like an MMO, especially this one that's this old. And so I don't think we're well, ever going to get it. We're just going to get just, vanilla and we're going to get the new game. And that's kind of it. 
Yeah. I, it, the problem is if you went, I mean, they redid most of those zones in Cataclysm. Yeah. So that's what you get. And if they had to do them again, it's an immense amount of work. I don't know that it's reasonable to expect they would redo the entire zones every five years. Yeah. The entire yeah. world, especially as it gets But couldn't they, couldn't they do this, Patrick? Here's what I know they could do, because this is just database. Okay. Here's what they do. Tell they, me what I know they could do. They make a new tree, okay? And they know that there's an ID <laughs> for a certain kind of tree that's scattered all over Stone Talon Mountains, let's say. And they just say, all right, take the new model and fill it, take all, it, replace all the trees that are in there. They could do that. Well... Sure, that would be so easy. I wonder why they haven't done it yet. Um, I guess first of all, there is there are a ton of assets. You know, for each zone, there are probably many specific assets, and then you have different art styles for ex each expansion. So it's just it's not just there's one tree in the entire the entire land masses of all of World of Warcraft. There are many many different trees. And then you have all of the art assets, you know, the buildings, the uh, doors and the tables and all everything. So just redoing them is already an immense amount of work. And then you have to go in and place them differently. You know, I'm sure uh, ar arrange things a little bit because they're not just uh, the same ones and it, it some are sized and differently. Uh, it I, doesn't. I, no, it doesn't fit exactly the same way. Yeah. So, in order for it to look cor correct, you need to go and I agree. Arrange them by hand. Well, I, so, I I agree. There's probably it, had they built it to be modular like that from the start, it, this would probably be an easier idea. That no, I no, no. It's not. You still need to remake every uh, asset that they have. Right, but, the, if, but if every asset if every asset adhered to a certain set of rules and tree number 45B8 needed an update, you'd just replace the you just replace the geometry data and texture data for that exact tree and it would be fine. But they didn't plan for that. No, but that's No, I don't I don't think that's even if they did, that's the problem. That's what we're talking about. You would need to redo every asset in the game. And that uh, an argument could be made where about. if they just retextured the existing models, that it would be a, a major step forward in visually improving. Yeah, still a bunch of work, have. still a bunch of work, but yes, entirely possible. They could totally yeah, do but it. There's, I mean, but, but if you want like Colteris trees in Elwyn, of... like that's, that's <laughs> no, probably I mean, a brand and new Pat, model. And, and Patrick makes a good point because here's the truth. I would be impressed the one time I went back to Sunken Temple and went, oh, Look what they did. They fixed all this shitty stuff that used to be here. And I'm never going to go in there again. So <laughs> so they're not doing it for any real payoff unless they figure out a way to repurpose old content that makes it more, you know, regularly playable. But, you know, outside of time walking and stuff like that. So, yeah, Patrick's probably right. I think. Thank I think, you. I mean, I, I still I still think from a programmatic point standpoint, if you go fly above an old zone and look down you see lots of different sizes of the exact same geometry they could go <laughs> plug that yes, stuff in of course but there are thousands of of assets that you need to redo it's not like the entirety of the world of azeroth and you know other land masses has one tree you probably oh, that's have why dozens I'm saying, of different that's trees. why i'm saying just do one at a time and only the trees I don't want anything else. Okay, all right. Because but then okay. you're gonna go to you're gonna go to Crossroads and you're like, God, these these horde huts look like butt. <laughs> <laughs> because the trees are gonna look amazing. Yeah. And then no, we I still realize got that. The, I realize that the but... four polygon uh, red skin huts. Like, I want those huts to look like they like Thrall's farm in the cinematic. No, it's like <laughs> I, I get that. It's like old gear on new models as well. They're not those. That old gear, yeah. you'd have to go all do that. So I, I totally get it, and I think you're right from a practical standpoint. I'm just saying what I wouldn't mind seeing. If I go to that Swamp right. of Sorrows one more time and have to look down and see how shitty those trees look, I'm going to die. So maybe just... Here's, here's, here's the rub with these kind of conversations. Uh, I, where I have the most fun is saying what I would like to happen and where they it starts to fall on its face and when we start talking about the, re the realistic... Uh, situation, which is this would be extremely hard and probably not worth it unless the next expansion takes place in Old World and all of the zones of Old World. And even then, is it worth it for them to do yeah. that much work? What they if, didn't even yeah. upgrade the trees in Cataclysm when they went back over Old World with the fine tooth comb. It's still the old vanilla trees. Yeah, it's there's no there's no financial reason for them to do it. I wouldn't do it if I were them.
this is just my own selfish wish that's all yeah, I mean, I, maybe, I, I mean I'm sure right if we're we talking do. about what we do what we would love to see then yes we would love to see the entire game update it's not time. listen patrick it's I'm not impo- it's not impossible to think that by year 20 of this game it's possible mm-hmm. that someone will figure out a machine learning ai assisted procedurally generated sort of thing that just goes over the whole game and machine learning fixes everything that looks stupid that's possible. I think you are correct. Yes. No, I, power. I, I, I would like. I would like wielded towards curing diseases. Uh, <laughs> instead, used to fix the trees in Dark Shore. Well, I mean, it's all. It would have a very specific job. Go through, comb it graphically, and tweak it all up. And it would have its problems and its issues. But I'm telling you, at some point, at some point, we're gonna get there. That's how all games will get made. We're not there yet, though. Uh, that's it for emails. Thanks for your emails, both you people. I don't know if you were males or females, so I will not genderify you. Uh, you can send us your own emails at theinstance at gmail.com. That's theinstance at gmail.com. And thus endeth the program. Before we go, a reminder that there's a great new way to support this show. Head on over to theinstance.net and click on our support button. You get the instance loot stash, wherein you get all sorts of cool things uh, every month that uh, you couldn't get otherwise. And there's many tiers that you can get. Uh, and those tiers will uh, be self-explanatory if you just go over there and click it. That's the instance.net. Check it out. It's a great way to support the show and uh, give back for these many years that we've been on the air, which is what, 14 to 12, 14, whatever it is. Get uh, those those art cards, man. It's got a really cool card back. Just yes, saying. the card back made by Garrett. Amazing. Very hearthstone. The, the art rad. on the front is okay too. The art on the front from me depends on what it is. Like this last one, uh, I just turned it in. I can't remember what I did. I did something cool, very wow related, and I don't remember. Oh, it's an orc holding a giant doom hammer over his shoulder. I was about to say, I know you sent it to me, but you sent it to me a while ago. Yeah, it's been a little while. All I, all I remember is orc. Yeah, there's always an orc somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yep. It's got like a horde shoulder tattoo. Yeah. I, he's yeah. the. You should have like put hid, hid mom in there somewhere. Should have. Should have oh, could doom hammer. Should have could have would have. It is a doom hammer. I was very careful at uh, rendering out my doom doom that, hander in that. Drawing. That's where doom hammer went. Your <laughs> that your, guy. Your orc took it. A random cartoon orc has it. Uh, anyway, that's uh, all there at theinstance.net, and you can find everything else there as well. Let's quickly see what else uh, people might be able to catch this week. Garrett, anything happening at amove.tv this week? Oh, there's always things happening. You should definitely go listen to the Anger Chicken because. A lot of Hearthstone going on, and we're going to have a lot to talk about on Tuesday. Into the Nexus is still going strong for you Heroes players out there. Mm. And let's talk about Star Wars is back and weekly. Ooh. So, Does it concern to, Does it concern you that Star Wars, is the, the next movie won't even happen until, what is it, 2022 20, or something? Or something uh, uh, like that? You know, we're getting Disney+. Plus. There's yeah. going to be other Star Wars to tide me over until then. That's true. Um, like three series that, plus a couple cartoons or something crazy yeah and if if that if that conversation is interesting to you uh, you can hear a lot more about it plus uh jenny justice and plus tom Merritt uh talking about it on let's talk about star wars so nice. go subscribe nice patrick anything from you uh i guess i would recommend people subscribe to pixels which is a show about games and uh we cover the news from the video games industry and it's pretty fun and uh, also the Phileas Club, where last episode we talked about the Indian election. It's a serious show. Uh, we try to be serious, at least. And uh, both of those are available at Frenchspin.com. We talked about the Indian election, by the way, with two Indian nationals who live, I think one of them lives in Utah. Oh, so, yeah, that's um, right. I knew yeah, that. Utah connection there. And so they know, you know, what is interesting to us, uh, Westerners, because they have both perspectives. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, Frenchspin.com for both of those. Yeah, and that show is legit if you're looking for reasonable voices in a somewhat loud time we live in where everybody mm. likes to get real extreme about such issues. They they cover a lot of worldwide stuff in a way that is uh, not only palatable and fun and entertaining, but reasonable and well thought out so check that out um what else is happening uh there's always something happening so i guess check out uh, the instance.net that's our website you can go to frogpants.com for more shows like this there is surely going to be something in there that you could enjoy and what else that's it i swear there was something else i was going to mention can't think of it so i won't worry about it that's going to do it for us we'll be back next time with even more 
in the world of Warcraft and beyond. Until then, have a fantastic week, and we'll see you next time. See you. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. Oh, crap. Was Terpster in there the whole time? I see he's in the chat suddenly. I missed all that. What? No, but he didn't even... What? It says Terps. I don't see Terpster in the chat. Is that, the, is that our Terps or a different Terps? Uh, T, T was in there. Oh. Well, I would have pulled...